Hi, I'm Heather Cameron. I'm an artist living on Gabriola Island, British Columbia. And in 1650, which was over 300 years ago, a Jesuit a priest came from France to be a missionary. But he wasn't really interested in saving souls. He was actually an artist. He documented the flora and fauna of Canada. Um, let's see, can you see? All the mammals and critters and even some of the ones that weren't here, like the unicorn. So, his style of drawing is just incredible to me. Um, he has a very idiosyncratic style, and if we, we can go to this. I've enlarged one of the drawings over 200%. Um, and this was a page from the book where he has four birds, um, a robin, uh, a gray jay, a blue jay, and a red-winged blackbird. Um, he has this odd, scritchy style. He was drawing with a pen and ink, a quill pen and walnut ink. Um, and he didn't do cross-hatching. He did this kind of scribble. Um, again, here on this bird, it's this very sketchy, loose scribble, uh, which I've been trying to capture in thread. And this is <laughs> sort of where I'm at. Um, I've just started working on the gray jay here, or the blue jay, I'm sorry. He has, because he's drawing with a quill pen, it doesn't flow in the way a thread does. Or, I should say it the other way around, the thread doesn't flow the way a line of ink draw would. So, whereas he could probably draw this in about less than an hour, it takes me ages and ages. Probably to finish this panel will be 30 to 40 hours. And so part of that is converting his lines to stitch. And over the course of this project, I've gotten hopefully better at doing it, but I've also gotten more and more finicky. So whereas when I first started, I used um, exclusively a cruel yarn, wool yarn, which comes in three strands, which can be stripped out which I felt uh, contributed to the kind of um, animal feral quality that I think that Louis Nicholas had captured. But um, birds don't aren't fuzzy. The wool is more suited to bears. And so for the birds I've been using some of the wool for outline mostly. And then a lot of this is pearl cotton, which makes quite a hard, smooth line which is more suited to conveying the effect of feathers. I've also been using um, embroidery floss. DMC is my favorite and it has uh, six strands which can be stripped out so I can get right down to a very very fine line. And I fear that I've been getting fussier and fussier as I go along as if you come over here and you can see this bird's head. I've used some of the single strand in his head and I mean I really like the effect. I think it, it is a lot like the original drawing but it's adding to the time it takes me to do all of this. And just as an aside while we're looking at this bird's head, he's supposed to be a blue jay but he doesn't have a crest. He just has this very vestigial crest and what Louis Nicholas often did was draw from other sources and then just label it with the name of what he said it was. But he was very arrogant and he would always conclude with saying this is exactly what it looks like. So, uh, there's one other thread that I use. Um, this is from Habu um, Textiles in New York and I was gifted with this and it's perfect. It's a cashmere thread, wool, very thin, but I don't have much of it so I've been using it um, for particular areas. I've used it a bit in here for the, the hairy parts of this 
bird's leg. Um, it's a little bit darker than the other um, threads I've been using. So again, I'm trying to not use it too much, otherwise it'll change the whole overall tone. Now, this bird has all kinds of interesting textures going on in his plumage. Um, there's this spot um, that's happening. Um, who knows what that is supposed to indicate. As far as I know, blue jays are not spotted. But um, I've been doing um, a little satin stitch, kind of, in uh, these areas, and I'm going to go over it with uh, either one or two strands of embroidery floss. And um, to get overlaying um, the, the layers to get that sort of effect and hopefully it will work. There's also on the wing very clear um, feathers that have a, a dot in the middle of each feather. That's something very typical of Louis Nicholas. He would often put a dot in the center of uh, an area, uh, whether it was um, often on the feet of the birds or on the feathers. He has dots on the tail feathers as well. There's a nice checkerboard thing happening on the um, this part of the wing and I've used the um, cruel yarn for the blockier parts and then I'm going to use the pearl cotton for the um, vertical lines. Now you you notice there's this blue uh, if, you, if you're close enough there. Uh, I've What I've done my method is I enlarge from the original drawing in the book I enlarge it by a photocopy and then I trace it off onto the cloth. I don't trace every little detail, I trace the main lines. And I have used a ballpoint pen, which is what the blue is. So you can see in perhaps this area of the tail, there isn't a hard line around the end of each feather. That's just my pen mark, which is indicated. And when I stitch it, I'm not going to have a hard line there. It's just going to be um, the, uh, the the stitches will give the effect of a kind of a, a sketched feather. I am starting to stitch the feathers here. Now, um, what I, I do is I consider it more of a mark making rather than traditional embroidery. I think people who do traditional embroidery would be horrified at my methods. So this is kind of like an open chain stitch maybe that I'm doing to catch to the uh, create the the edge of the feather but as you can see the can we shift up to the the drawing here the actual feather has um, an irregular edge it's not a smooth edge so what I'm going to do is go back afterwards and stitch in a few short little lines. Sort of like this. I have done it in other ways, kind of um, with a, oh, I don't know what I would call it, kind of a, a, a curved edge, like a open buttonhole stitch. But um, these ones are so small that basically all I can do is put in a few short little stitches to create that irregular edge. So what I am doing is a translation. It's not an absolute perfect literal copy of what he's doing. I'm trying to capture the essence of what he was doing but because it's a completely different medium, it's going to come out different. <laughs> it's inevitable, and that's the nature of translation. Hello again. It's a couple of days later, and as you can see, I've made a bit of progress. I did have a couple of other projects that I that kept me away from my stitching here, but um, I'm back, and I've done 
most of the area of the breast here. I'm going to have to do more in the back and the belly a little bit and the feet. And then I'll be able to move on to the robin, at which point I hope to see you again.